I'm Carl Hoes from the Lincoln Electric Welding School in Cleveland, Ohio. Today we're going to talk about another subject. We're going to talk about cleaning aluminum before we weld on it. Uh, I have several forms of aluminum here. I have some uh, cold worked 30-03 aluminum, which is pretty bright and shiny. We pre-purchase purchase this for our school. It's a non-heat treatable aluminum. And it's actually pretty easy to weld on this without any additional cleaning. In a school, we don't even bother brushing it. Aerospace uh, components and things, it would be acetone clean and also uh, probably scraped down or braided to remove the oxide layer because that, even though that real thin microscopic layer of oxide um, can be removed with the positive polarity of the arc, what's inside that oxide actually goes into the aluminum. Hydrogen is one of the things that's often trapped in the oxide, so uh, that can go into the aluminum and the liquid aluminum hydrogen takes up space and that leads to holes or porosity in the weld. Uh, some industries tolerate a little bit more porosity than others. Some are more picky, so things are going to have to be really clean in some industries. Um, I have other forms of aluminum here. I have what's called a, well, this is probably, I don't, I'm not even sure what alloy this is. It's a piece we found laying around, but I kind of use it as an example. I call it hydrated oxide. That's also known as a water stain. Uh, when the aluminum lays out in the weather, if it's uh, on a dump truck that's going up and down the highway for a couple of years, it loses that shiny luster and starts to look dull like this. That oxide layer is growing several times thicker. It might be 200 angstroms thick. An angstrom, by the way, is four billionths of an inch, so it's still pretty thin. But in the atomic world, that's, that's a, there's a lot of stuff can be trapped in this oxide layer. And adjusting the, the balance on your welding machine might strip that oxide off a little better, but what's in the oxide goes into your weld. So this should always be a braided clean or, or um, uh, chemically clean to remove the oxide. When you weld on aluminums like this, you clean it before you assemble. You don't want to assemble the parts, tack them together, and try to clean them afterwards because the solvents get up underneath the parts and then they just come up in your weld. So you want to wipe everything down, make sure it's dry, clean. Um, what I always recommend is to degrease first, remove any oil, uh, coolants, tar, you know, from a dump truck that's hauling hot asphalt around, there's tar and things like that on the surface. Remove all that from the surface first. Second thing is abrade the surface to remove the, the contaminated oxide layer. And the third thing is assemble. I brushed this side already with an abrasive. Uh, you can see how dirty this was, but it took a nice bright shine here. I used a hand wire brush, brand new stainless steel wire brush. And uh, you could use power tools, but make sure you're going very slow with a power tool, not a high speed power tool. If you dig in real deep with a aggressive wire wheel like this, what you'll actually do is, is rub that oxide or burnish it, they call it and you're basically rolling that oxide over and trapping it under the surface. So, got to be careful with a tool like this. Other things, sometimes preparing aluminum or beveling. We might use a die grinder like this. It's really not designed for cutting aluminum. A more aggressive wheel like this is designed for a bit tool like this is designed for uh, removing aluminum. Generally, woodworking tools work really good to, to prepare aluminum for welding, beveling. You can use a, a joiner, a planer, a router. Uh, you can saw aluminum with a regular wood saw with a carbide bit in it. Um, abrasive saws tend to roll over the edges like you see here and trap a lot of oxide. That would have to be cleaned up with a file afterwards down inside. All that junk is just kind of rolled up underneath there and trapped. So uh, a uh, saw, a chop saw with a uh, regular wood bit or a, a bit designed for sawing through aluminum works a little bit better than an abrasive wheel. This is a 60 series aluminum. It's an extrusion. When you see shapes like this, uh, in different forms. There's aluminum angle here. Also, flat bar is an extruded form of aluminum. It's also heat treated, but it's pushed through a die. It tends to be a little more contaminated than some of the cold, cold rolled aluminum. So, again, I'd recommend even with brand new heat treated aluminums like this that you brush them before you weld on them. One of the cleaners that's pretty standard in the industry for cleaning aluminum is acetone. If you're going to use acetone, make sure you wear rubber gloves. Read the MSDS sheet. Uh, it is basically the same thing women use to remove fingernail polish from their fingers. It just doesn't smell quite as good. They usually say alcohol is not so good. It tends to smear the grease around. So acetone works good, but there are other safer cleaners that work well, very well too. There's some uh, non-chlorinated brake cleaner works good. Don't use the chlorinated kind. Use the non-chlorinated kind. Citrus degreasers you buy in an auto parts store. Goo gone, things like that. They also work good to clean tape, uh, glue off of aluminum. You got to get all that stuff off. You can't get aluminum too clean. Probably one of the worst things I get at the racetrack, we get where somebody wants to weld this piece of aluminum to this piece of aluminum, and this piece was painted. And what they do is they grind a little spot off the paint. They only want this little quarter inch spot ground off the paint, and they lay this piece on. Well, when I go to weld that, 
Well, he's sure he cleaned the little spot where I've been a well, but a half inch away, the paint's still there. Well, aluminum conducts heat real fast, and the heat gets into that paint, and what happens is the paint starts to smoke. The smoke comes up into my shielding gas, and it goes right down into my weld, contaminates the weld. So really, when you're going to clean paint off of aluminum or, or tape or glues or sealers, you've got to clean back a couple inches back. Clean back a ways back so that, that the contaminants don't come up into your weld. Sanding wheels like this work pretty good. Uh, but you've got to be careful not to bear down too hard and again smear the stuff in. I've used stripper, stripper wheels they sell for removing paint, work pretty good. Also, if you're MIG welding, your wire, your MIG wire, over time the oxide layer grows heavier on, th on that. Aluminum oxide is a resistor, it doesn't conduct electricity very well, and if that aluminum wire lays out for years, it begins to also get a, a heavy layer like this. This is a piece of brand new two aluminum TIG wire. And it looks pretty clean, but really, even if I clean this off, within less than a second, the oxide layer reforms. But if this lays around for a long time, it too will get a dull look and probably should be discarded or cleaned individually. MIG wire, you can't clean. TIG wire, I could use a, uh, uh, an abrasive uh, stainless steel wool or something like that to clean this off with. Got to be careful, the abrasive doesn't uh, contaminate the aluminum too, so make sure you use like stainless steel wool. That's the best thing to clean that with. If this was an old wire that laid my shop for a long time, I'd have to clean it up. MIG wire. After it's been exposed to the air for a couple of years, it's sometimes better off discarding it and getting new, new MIG wire because you're going to push all that oxide into your aluminum welds. For more information on aluminum welding and cleaning aluminum, go to Lincoln Electric's website, www.lincolnelectric.com. There are several good technical articles on that website on cleaning aluminum.